good evening, everyone. We welcome you out to our broadcast tonight. We pray all of you are doing well um, from the comforts of your home. Um, so you pray for us as we're here tonight. We're going to pray for you. Uh, I'm going to open us up in prayer, and then we'll dive right into the message this evening. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to come to your house. We thank you for being such a good God. Lord, you provide for us in ways that we don't even know and understand. So, Lord, we pray for each one that's going to be tuning in tonight. Lord, you know the needs of their life and of their heart. Lord, we pray that you would answer um, those needs according to your will. Lord, we pray that you'd manifest yourself um, in this place tonight, but also in the homes of the people that are going to be watching. You change hearts and change lives as only you can. We'll give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything that's said and done. In the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles this evening, turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, and we're going to be in verses 12 through 15. 2 Kings chapter 2, and verses 12 through 15. The Bible says this, And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elisha that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to come. Lord, to worship you tonight, and Lord, to preach your pure, holy, infallible word. Lord, we're thankful for your word tonight. And Lord, I pray that you'd cleanse me of self and sin. Lord, fill me with you tonight. Lord, just hide me behind the cross and use me as a vessel to be used for your glory. Lord, you preach tonight. We'll give you all praise, honor, and glory for everything that's said and done. In the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. The context of Scripture in which we're in tonight, to bring you up to speed where we are here in verses 12 through 15, which we've read. You'll find that the prophet Elijah is preparing to be taken up into heaven. And Elijah takes Elisha over the Jordan River. You'll find that throughout this chapter that Elisha is staying faithful to Elijah. He's going exactly where Elijah goes. Staying with him. Showing how committed he is. And then Elijah is going to ask Elisha a question. What shall I do for thee? And answering that question, Elisha asked for a double portion of the spirit that is upon Elijah. What a request that is. And Elijah says, if you see me when I am taken away, it shall be. And we find that the prophet Elijah is taken up to heaven in a chariot of fire. That's one of my son Hudson. He loves this story about the chariot of fire taking Elijah up to heaven. And as that brings us up to speed, we can't help but think about these two men. Elijah, the, the great prophet. Now we have many stories about Elijah and his boldness and the power that God would, that would just flow through him. And God used him in such a mighty way. I can't help but think about the prophets of Baal on top of Mount Carmel. <laughs> And Elijah, one man going against the prophets of Baal, and God sending the fire down to light that altar. Elijah, a great man of God, but now it's going to be time for him to be going away. And now Elisha is going to be stepping in. In verse 12, we find that Elisha saw it. What did Elijah say? If you see it, if you see me taken up to heaven, it shall be. Your request shall be. And Elisha, he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. 
And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. I find it very interesting that before Elisha takes up the mantle of Elijah, that he rents his own clothes, tearing them in two pieces. Symbolic of picking up that mantle that Elijah had had. That thing that seemed like power in the presence of the Spirit that was on Elijah's life. Now, Elijah's going to take it up, but he's not going to take it up and put it on his own clothes. He's going to rent his clothes and take up Elijah's mantle and carry it on. When I think about carrying on the mantle and doing it for the glory of God, I can't help but think about my life and, and what God has called me to do. I, I can remember being a, a little boy and my parents would take us to church and I can remember we'd always sit in the front. And I remember sitting there as a little boy and I, I would watch preachers preach some of the best preaching I've ever heard in my life. I got to hear with my own two ears and see with my own two eyes from the church pews. I didn't have to look it up online. I didn't have to hear it on tape or on CD. I got to see it and hear it for myself. And my parents wanted to instill that in us, that church was very important. And I would remember seeing these men of God, and I would follow them with my eyes as they would get behind a sacred desk, and it seemed like they just preached with such passion and power and zeal. And I can remember being a little boy sitting there watching my heroes preach. And I can remember thinking to myself, God, if you were to ever call me to preach, that's how I want to do it. That's how I want to do it. I want to preach it in power, with passion, in zeal. Little did I know what God would have planned for my life. But I had to get my own self out of the way in order to pick up the mantle of what other men of God had laid behind and to Pick it up, put it on, and carry it on. I couldn't help but think about my passion that I have and just the joy that I see in young preachers. I, I guess people still classify me as one. I, I'm only 32 years old, so people still classify me as a young preacher, even though there are others that are a whole lot younger than I am. And I love seeing young preachers that are filled with passion and zeal and, and they want to serve and they want to learn and man I pray for my ministry that I can be that kind of mentor that can take them under my wing I pray that I'm that type of pastor that I can look down one day and there's a group of young men sitting in the front with their Bibles in their lap that I can throw in the car and take them to meetings with me and different things and just pour into them and mentor them and they can see hey this calling that my pastor has is the same calling I've got on my life. And I, I want to proclaim the gospel and I want to do what God's called me to do. Elisha, he's, he's asked for a double portion. A double portion of what was on Elisha. I couldn't help but think about when I came to become the pastor here at Big Level. And I walked through the door and I looked and they've got pictures of former pastors there on the wall. And I didn't know this before I came out here, but Everett Wallace was a pastor here. Now I grew up listening to Everett Wallace preach over at Ingleside Baptist Church. But I didn't know Everett Wallace had been a pastor here from 1984 to 1989. And as I got into the meeting with the search committee and the deacons, and we decided that we would go forward with preaching a trial sermon and going to vote, we've become the new pastor here at Big Level Baptist Church. They told me a story. They said that when Preacher Wallace was here in the 80s, said that one time he got all the deacons together with himself, and they came out, and they gathered around this very pulpit that we have in here right now. And they prayed that night that no man of God 
would ever get behind the desk and preach unless he had the power of God on him. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm in this place and I'm behind this desk, I feel something from another world. This is a special place. I tell people all the time, this is the most liberty I've ever had to preach is in this building right here with these people. There's liberty here. There's freedom here. There's power here. And I believe it all goes back to a man of God with a group of deacons praying about this pulpit and praying that the power of God would be on the man that got behind the desk. And I thought about myself picking up a mantle of this legacy that this great man of God had Brother Robert Orr and all the men that have been preaching here and to carry it on. Man, it gets me excited to think about that. But I got to get out of myself's way. Got to get out of self's way <laughs> to take up that mantle. You see, when God calls you to do something, whether it be teach Sunday school, whether it be work in children's ministry, whether it be work in youth ministry, whether it be drive a bus, whether it be cut the grass, be a treasurer, church clerk, whatever he calls you to do, if you want the power of God to be upon you as you serve in those capacities, get out of the way. <laughs> get out of the way. Pick up that mantle, but he rent his clothes, and he also, and he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. He takes up the mantle. Now, if you look back at verse eight of chapter two, you'll find that Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. What had Elisha just experienced? He had experienced Elijah using that mantle. God parting the waters. And now Elijah has been taken up into heaven. And his mantle fell from him. And now Elisha is picking up that very same mantle. I don't see in verse 13 where Elisha picked up the mantle. And he went and said, look at me, look at me, look at me. I don't see where he says, man, I, I'm the best now. <laughs> I got it. I don't see that <laughs> in that passage of Scripture. But rather, I see a man who took up the mantle of Elisha and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. When we take up the mantle, we do it in humility. We don't do it in pride and arrogance. And I want to remind you, taking up the mantle will humble you. <laughs> when you think about exactly what it symbolizes and the power upon your life. And God's going to prove his power to Elisha. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him in verse 14 and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had sent the waters, they parted hither and thither and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? It's not a question in arrogance, but rather it's a question in faith. God was going to reveal himself to Elijah. God was going to reveal his power that had just come upon Elisha in this very moment. And the waters parted. Not only is this going to be proven to Elisha. But it's going to be proven to the sons of the prophets. As they view. And they said the spirit of Elijah 
doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. Hey, they come, they proclaim, and they bow. Knowing that the spirit that was on Elijah is now resting on Elisha. The great marvelous works that God did through Elijah and that same power now rests on Elisha. Elisha is going to have the opportunity now to carry the mantle. Couldn't help but think as I, as I studied and I was at home while, while I was studying today and I had some music playing and I had my earbuds in so I didn't bother everybody else in the house. And my kids were just running around, just playing. I couldn't help but think as I looked at my two boys. One sitting there playing Nintendo, oblivious to what's going on in daddy's heart and daddy's mind as I'm sitting behind him. The other one running all through the house driving his mama crazy, oblivious to what's going on in daddy's heart, daddy's mind. And the Holy Ghost began to talk to me. And he said, I want you to look at those two boys. You don't know what I've got planned for. And I don't know. I'm not going to be one of those pastors that says, my, my sons are going to be preachers. I believe this. There, there's a lot of mama called and daddy sent preachers out there. And my boys ain't going to be those. <laughs> they're going to be called from somebody that's a whole lot bigger than daddy is. <laughs> if they're going to do it. But God sat there. Dealt with my heart. Looking at my kids. And even looking at my little girl. And he challenged me today. Leave them something to pick up. Leave them something to pick up. Because the same power that's upon you will be upon them. Because God's not limited. I look at my Bible. I've had this Bible since 2006. It's worn a little bit. I love this Bible. I've got other Bibles, but this is the one that I, I tote and I preach out of. It's just special to me. I've got different writings and different highlights in it. It's got one portion of Genesis that my daughter got an ink pen, and she decided to give me some artwork. So I made sure I left her a little autograph down there and let her know that she did that. But this Bible is special to me. Because it's God's pure, holy, infallible word. And it was given to me. And it's the Bible that I preach out of. And I don't know what God's plan is. But one day, it may just come that I take my last breath here. And I take my first breath in another world. Nothing pleases my heart more. And see one of my kids pick up daddy's Bible and say, God, the same power that you put on my daddy's life, the same passion and the same zeal that you put on my daddy's life, God, I'd love to have a double portion of it. I'd be their biggest cheerleader in heaven. See them carrying on the mantle. Who do we need to invest in, church? Elijah, he had Elisha. Elisha had a big request, but God allowed it to come true. It's time that we invest, church. Invest in those around us. Invest in those little ones. Love on them. 
Give them the gospel. Because you do not know what God has planned for them when it's their turn to take up the man and ruin their race well. May God bless the reading and the preaching of his word tonight. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to look into your word. Lord, I'm thankful for this passage of scripture. Thankful for the conviction. Lord, and the challenge that I felt upon my life today as I studied. Lord, we thank you. Lord, for the truth of your word, we see your power. And Lord, we pray. Lord, for ourselves and for, for other ministries as well. God, we pray for your power to be upon us. Lord, we pray for this church that your power be upon it. Lord, help us to take up the mantle. Help us to run our race well. Lord, for your glory alone, it's got nothing to do with us. It's all about your spirit and your work. So, Lord, we, we pray for all those that have tuned in tonight. Lord, we pray that they would do what you're telling them to do. Lord, keep everyone safe. We pray nothing but safety, health, and blessings to every home. Lord, we look forward to the day when we can come back to your house and worship once again. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. We thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We pray uh, that this, this message has been a challenge and a blessing and an encouragement to you. Uh, we pray you have a great evening and a great rest of your week. Um, again, if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. God bless you all. Have a great night.